Hello. Welcome to our program, Digital Sign Out, Digital Slide Review. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel. Our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, uh, a joint venture with uh, PATH Presenter and the Digital Pathology Association, which offers complimentary uh, membership to trainees and uh, members from uh, low and middle income company, countries. Uh, our case today is uh, one of the uh, more unusual entities in GYN pathology. Uh, a patient who's 49 years old has noted a slowly developing mass um, in the vulva, uh, which is associated with uh, some degree of urinary incontinence. Because of its uh, slow nature in uh, developing, she's uh, rather slow to gain attention for it uh, until the incontinence is uh, somewhat uh, difficult to uh, cope with. Uh, there's no evident surface lesion when she comes to her uh, routine gynecologic uh, uh, appointment. Um, and uh, so uh, it's thought that she may actually have some sort of a um, cystocele or rectocele causing the problem. Uh, let's think about the other lesions, however, that may present as sort of a mass lesion without surface involvement. Uh, any of the lesions that uh, arise from the Bartholin gland, uh, cyst, adenoma, and carcinoma, uh, oftentimes will not have a surface um, component uh, and may be associated with incontinence. There are certain uh, stromal le lesions, such as aggressive angiomyxoma, which we've talked about previously, uh, which also can cause mass lesions in this area. Of course, we've mentioned cystocele and rectocele. These are usually not mass lesions so much as just uh, um, <clears throat> in, uh, protrusions or uh, uh, herniations. Uh, and then there are the neoplastic lesions. Uh, uh, and of course, we have uh, skin lesions such as hydradenoma, syringoma, uh, and so forth, as well as the breast-like lesions such as fibroadenoma, phylloides tumor, uh, and carcinomas, which can present in this location. Rarely, uh, intestinal-type lesions or germ cell lesions can present in the vulva due to uh, misplaced uh, uh, germ cells or misplaced epithelium. And then finally, of course, we want to consider the possibility of metastatic lesions. So uh, with a several centimeter mass, the patient uh, ultimately came to a, a sampling of this lesion. And here we see several fragments from this tumor, which was sort of shelled out. Uh, obviously, this is uh, not uh, just a simple uh, adnexal lesion. Uh, we don't see adnexal structures here, but we see instead uh, this uh, infiltrative pattern of uh, a mixture of epithelial cells, uh, and uh, stromal uh, elements uh, with some interspersed vasculature. We do not see any underlying uh, glandular architecture, ducts, or uh, cutaneous adnexal structures. Uh, on uh, further evaluation, we see that these are uh, nested cells, a uh, little bit of puzzle pieces, a little bit of an infiltrative pattern with some desmoplastic uh, stroma intervening. Uh, the nests are entirely solid, uh, and as we look at the uh, uh, nuclear features, we see there are several uh, uh, readily recognized uh, small nucleoli. Um, there's ample eosinophilic cytoplasm and mostly a fairly solid pattern of growth with uh, a relatively uniform nuclei. So uh, seeing this type of a pattern, one might uh, wonder, uh, are there any primary tumors in this area that uh, could give this uh, pattern, or are we dealing with a metastasis? Uh, well, certainly uh, non-keratinizing squamous carcinomas might have some of this pattern, but they would have a surface connection. Um, other adnexal skin tumors, uh, less likely, um, but uh, certainly the uh, breast-type lesions uh, could have this pattern of appearance. Uh, we don't see any in situ lesion, though uh, such can be seen on occasion. And so we might then uh, go to uh, some of the immunohistochemical markers. Uh, this lesion was uh, strongly positive with CK7 um, and also expressed uh, hormone receptors for estrogen and progesterone receptor, uh, suggesting that uh, this is a mammary type uh, or mammary-like uh, carcinoma arising in the uh, vulva uh, in this situation. So what do we know about this uh, lesion? 
uh, let's uh, just uh, refer to it briefly. This is uh, now termed mammary-like carcinoma of the vulva um, and is uh, generally considered to be analogous to breast carcinomas, um, probably uh, due to uh, occurrence from uh, uh, breast tissue that arises in the milk line, uh, which can extend down into the uh, uh, vulvar area. This is usually an adulthood type lesion and most frequently is postmenopausal. Uh, now, we are aware that uh, Paget's disease is an in situ kind of lesion and occasionally is associated with an invasive component, uh, but this is distinct from uh, invasive Paget's disease uh, in that there is no surface component. And so in the absence of that, while a therapy and uh, histochemistry may be similar, um, the uh, term mammary light carcinoma of the vulva is reserved for uh, these cases without any surface component. Uh, as we mentioned, these can be CK7 positive. Additionally, they can be GATA3 positive. Um, and of course, hormone receptors and HER2 can be uh, somewhat variable. These are uniformly negative for PAX8. Uh, P16 is usually splotchy or negative. And uh, P63, of course, will be negative um, in the absence of any in situ component. And certainly uh, would be indicative that there's not squamous differentiation in these tumors. Uh, this accounts for a very small percentage of, uh, of all of our neoplasms, uh, but it is a recognized type and uh, presented in the uh, most recent WHO uh, manual. So our final sign-out diagnosis today is adenocarcinoma of mammary type uh, involving the vulva. Well, we thank you for joining us. Uh, we hope that that's brought into uh, clarity of uh, view this uh, type of lesion. And if you like this, uh, please uh, share your comments on unusual tumors you've encountered uh, in the vulva. Uh, we do hope that uh, you'll join us for future programs by uh, catching that subscribe button uh, right there, uh, and then you, you won't miss out on future releases from our channel. We do appreciate your uh, comments and uh, value your suggestions for how we can improve and uh, other topics you'd like to see us cover. Um, but until next time, Thanks so much for joining us.